Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to talk about places where you can find fossils in California. Here are a few facts for a start. The official state fossil of California is the saber toothed cat Smilodon californicus. Perfect skeletons of these animals were found in tar pits of Rancho La Brea in Los Angeles. But saber toothed cats inhabited California for 42 million years and became extinct merely 10,000 years ago. Prior to the late tertiary period, much of Western California was covered with inland sea until the uplift of the tectonic plates. The sea disappeared, leaving not just rich oil deposits, but plenty of fossilized shells and bones of marine animals as the evidence of its existence. These are dominating fossils in modern-day California, although other types of paleontological specimens, including dinosaurs, have been found. We compiled a list of eight fossil localities within a day's drive from San Francisco. But first, let's visit an exhibit at Red Rock Canyon State Park and take a look at the diverse mammalian fauna of California 10 million years ago. These are definitely real fossil bones. They are encased in so-called jackets made out of plaster in order to preserve the integrity of the specimen during transportation from the place where it was found. This long piece is a gomphothery tusk. Gomphotheries were precursors of modern elephants with two pairs of tusks, the lower and the upper ones. Most of the fossils from the Red Rock Canyon belong to vertebrate animals that lived here 7 to 12 million years ago. Elephants, cats, early horses, and rhinos are among them. Based on the detailed studies of the finds, scientists reconstruct ancient environments and migrations. Here are well-preserved teeth of an extinct rhino. Judging from the abundance of large herbivores, the landscape was much greener than present-day desert. Horse leg bones, ankle bones of camels. Camel bones are common in these deposits. Did you know that camels actually evolved in North America and then, around 5 million years ago, spread to other continents using the famous Bering Land Bridge? This is the lower jaw of an oreodont a relative of camels the size of a pig. Notice three toes on the leg bones of a three-toed horse. It's like the textbook example of horse evolution. This visitor center has an amazing collection of specimens on display. Fossil plants are also found in Red Rock Canyon. Tiny bones and teeth can be found after sifting through the treated matrix. These belong to mice, snakes, and lizards. Humans came much later, but they turned out to be tough survivors, at least for now. This one is a lower leg bone from a giraffe-like camel that was approximately 16 feet tall. In addition to fascinating fossils, the park has spectacular landscapes with colorful rock formations, a mixture of ancient clays, layers of volcanic ash, 
and lava. Quite a few Hollywood motion pictures were filmed at this location, like Jurassic Park and The Twilight Zone. I'm sure we will visit it again. Now, let's go over the places where fossils can be observed in their natural environment, or in situ, scientifically speaking. And I want to underline the word observed. Number one is the world-famous place known as Ernst Quarries, or Shark Tooth Hill. It's located near Bakersfield and is an important locality representing marine shallow water environment during the Miocene period, 12 to 15 million years ago. The coloration of shark teeth from Bakersfield is breathtaking and is valued by collectors. The land is privately owned and public digging is currently allowed for a fee. We are yet to go there because of the long distance and concerns about valley fever, a lung disease caused by fungi. However, we did visit the Buena Vista Museum of Natural History that has an excellent collection of the fossils from the locality. There are a few other sites nearby, such as Ant Hill, for example, where people dig out the fossilized shark teeth. Number two is the stretch of shore between New Brighton Beach and Capitola. It is accessible mostly during low tide and is known for marine mollusks and whale bones embedded in the Purushima Formation of Pliocene. Mollusks are hard to extract without breaking and honestly aren't worth the effort. They can be found in huge boulders fallen from above. So do not get too close to the cliffs. The huge bones and teeth of marine mammals look like they have been cemented into the matrix and are untouchable by the local law. By the way, Checking laws and complying with specific regulations related to any locality is your responsibility. Vertebra fossils are definitely a big no-no, and to me, taking pictures or videos makes more sense than collecting anyway. Number three is Carmel Valley, located south of Monterey. It's full of crab imprints found in petroleum-rich shale. There are multiple road cuts, and some of them produce the crab imprints with intricate details and often colored in dark yellow or rusty orange hues due to the presence of iron oxides seeping into tiny, empty spaces in matrix created by carapaces. Even though it is often interpreted as the result of periodic mass mortality, I'm convinced that those were actually exoskeletons after molting similar to the remnants of trilobites. Crabs are small, hence the common name pea crab. They are thought to live between the mantle and the shell of bivalve mollusks. Multiple dots are common, but they are not eggs or fish scales. They are shells of single-celled organisms called foraminifera. Their elongated aggregates were made by marine tube worms. Some layers of the sediment may contain imprints of bivalve mollusks, leaves, occasional fish, and in extremely rare cases, a shark tooth. Similar sediments are found along the coast from San Luis Obispo south and up to Point Reyes north. Number four is Scotts Valley, which used to be a great spot to hunt for shark teeth, but not anymore. The old site is not accessible although there are reports suggesting that fossil hunters might find other spots in the neighborhood. I'm not going to comment on the legality of such excavations until the exact coordinates are revealed to the public. Scouting the local hills shows potential and maybe, one day, a pay-to-dig place will be created in Scotts Valley, but the attitude of locals towards such explorations seems to be negative. There is a spot near Carbonera Creek with sand dollars, but warning signs were put up there as well. We took a few pictures from the other side of the road, and you can see the undisturbed fossils that are nicely exposed. I think it's better this way. Number 5. Coalinga, and in particular, Jacalitos Creek, is a dry and hilly place which used to be under the sea, too. Sand dollars called dendraster and clamshells are commonly found all around Koalinga. 
We have never been there, but regularly see specimens at various gem shows. Number 6. Mount Diablo has an interesting geology, where more recent layers of the Eocene period are found below the older ones formed during the Jurassic period. Mostly, marine mollusks and leaf imprints can be observed there, but at least 156 localities and 455 species were found over the years. The area is protected, by the way. The Black Hawk Ranch Fossil Quarry is well known to the scientists who found bones and teeth of rhinos, horses, camels, elephant-like gomphotheriums back in the 1930s. Number 7. North of Sacramento, between Roseville and Malakoff Digging State Historic Park, petrified wood is hidden underground and periodically turns up in people's backyards, in seasonal creeks, or at the places where gold was mined during the gold rush. Outcrops of sedimentary rocks from the Chico Formation can be found between Rockland and Folsom Lake. Number 8 is Drake's Beach at Point Reyes National Seashore. Once, we found whale bones sticking out of the cliff. Well-preserved whale skeleton was recovered from the deposits exposed during low tide. There is even a megalodon tooth in the visitor center. To be fair, we can name multiple beaches along the central coast of California with similar paleontological or geological setting and fair chances to encounter a fossilized whale bone. Here are just a few of them. Año Nuevo, Fitzgerald Marine Reserve, Pescadero Beach, and Santa Cruz near Wharf House are the places where we noticed fossilized bones among the gravel. As you can see, there's plenty of evidence that California was under the ocean once upon a time, until it got uplifted due to the movements of the Earth's tectonic plates. But I wish fossils from earlier periods would be better represented like brachiopods, ammonites, crinoids, or trilobites. Let's hope for more discoveries to be made. Thanks for watching! Check the description of this video, which contains links to our videos about specific locations mentioned earlier. La Brea Tar Pits near Los Angeles and Marble Mountain Trilobites were not included, as they are more in the southern part of California. Also, there is not much information about isolated finds of dinosaurs and marine reptiles in the San Joaquin Valley. Please feel free to comment and let us know if we missed any particular prominent spot. Finally, I recommend attending annual gem shows in Turlock, San Jose, Roseville, and Mariposa, as well as talking to members of local rock clubs. Good luck!